African governments need to implement an integrated approach to deal with the voracious fall armyworm. It's threatening agricultural yields right across the continent. A section of researchers and stakeholders at the Africa Green Revolution Forum in Kigali, Rwanda, have come together and they've promised to collaborate as part of efforts to eradicate this pest. CGTN's Will Kistanyabo filed this report from Kigali. It is difficult to avoid these colorful contraptions, so much so that this corner of the room has attracted a lot of attention during this forum. These are traps meant to halt the armyworm invasion, the work of Farm Truck Limited, a Nairobi-based company. But there's little support for the invention yet. Farm Truck hopes to get that at this forum. What we have here is the housing. The bigger part is the housing. Then we use the pheromone. The work of the pheromone is to attract the fall armyworm, the adult fall armyworm. Then when they are attracted, when they come, they stick to this group. One such trap covers a quarter of an acre. Already the traps are in use in Kitale, part of Western Kenya's breadbasket, but only on a trial basis. And though the company maintains that the method is effective, researchers warn that one method is not enough to halt the armyworms much across the continent. There's no one bullet uh, that can solve it. It's going to be a combination of many different strategies. And just to name a few of them, uh, we need to develop a really good early warning system and then a rapid response. The fall armyworm's favorite crop is maize, the staple for more than 200 million sub-Saharan Africans. The United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization estimates that sub-Saharan Africa has about 35 million hectares of maize grown by smallholders and that almost all of it is either infested or at risk of infestation. A group of researchers are now planning a symposium to discuss effective methods of addressing Africa's armyworm problem. The International Center for Maize and Wheat Research is leading the plan. Now the first component we are missing, what I see already, is integrated approaches. People study only biological control or only this other option. But we have to see how they work together as well. The fall armyworm continues to threaten food production in East and Southern Africa after devastating huge trucks of land earlier this year. Organizers here hope that solutions developed will provide the necessary ammunition to protect agricultural produce across the continent. Wilkis Anyabo, CGTN. All right, then. Agriculture is a fairly big theme in the bulletin tonight, so let's stick with that. Jeremy Cordingly joins me now in studio. He's the managing director of Crop Nutrition Lab Services. It's got its headquarters here in Kenya. So soil testing is one of the things we know your company for. And for a lot of us who are not in agricultural policy, not in, um, in, in farming, why does it matter? Thanks for having me on the show. Uh, well, you know, we must understand that having a fertile soil is the backbone of a successful farming operation. So uh, knowing what's in your soil and what's um, lacking in your soil is actually a fundamental information gap uh, and something that has to be addressed through soil testing. So unless farmers are actually soil testing, mm -hmm. they really have little information on what fertilizers to actually purchase and apply to their, to their land. Can you give me a sense of how much yield we're leaving on the table? Because, say, for argument's sake, even away from the fertilizer bit, I'm not perhaps planting the right crop based on the soil that I have to work with. Sure, soil testing can address and, and inform us on which is the best crop to grow, but actually the, the real fundamental purpose of soil testing is actually to identify which are the limiting essential plant nutrients. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's a combination. Um, we've known that for years now, vital, up-to-date research is essentially important if you can actually make yields go up to the levels that you do want. But what exactly is the problem here? Because we do see some governments investing in agricultural research, but we're not seeing that translate into what small-scale farmers, especially across sub-Saharan Africa, are doing. Yeah, I agree. I mean, you know, there's a lot of good research going on, but uh, knowledge transfer continues to be a problem. I agree. I think this is where digital technology really will start to play a role in the future. Uh, our company is investing heavily in digital farming applications through mobile phones to give farmers real-time information on what they actually need to do and when mm -hmm. each and every week. Mm -hmm. So I think this is really the role of digital technology to take uh, research uh, and provide that extension to 
all these farmers across Africa. Where do you stand on the, the public versus private roles as far as that debate is concerned? Because yes, as a farmer, you might be able to pay for the service, but not every farmer is able, able to actually afford that sort of thing. And strictly speaking, this should be a public service, shouldn't it? Well, yeah, I think, you know, uh, you, you know the private sector, obviously, we're, we're, we're here to stay. Um, we want uh, farmers to embrace our technologies. And we, we believe it's really not about price, it's about return on investment. So if governments can incentivize, incentivize farmers uh, to invest in these new technologies like soil testing, uh, we're seeing farmers adopting soil testing at a rapid rate uh, across East Africa, which is a very good sign. And these farmers are doubling or tripling uh, farm yields or crop yields from actually using the correct tailor-made fertilizer formulations for their exact soil conditions. So this is basically precision agriculture? That this saying. is precision agriculture. And how is it working out across the different countries you're operating? Because I know you're not just in Kenya, it's Ethiopia as well and a couple of other countries. Well, we're, uh, you know, we like, we're proud to say that we're operating from the East African coast to the West African coast. We've got projects and, and clients in, in Senegal, uh, uh, right in the west of Africa, mm -hmm. uh, down to Zambia and Zimbabwe, uh, Nigeria, Ghana. So we like to say we're pan-African. Mm -hmm. And we're really pushing a lot of focus on uh, developing uh, low-cost um, soil testing technology platforms which allow all farmers to access uh, soil testing services. And this would essentially be things that farmers, like say for example a, a, t a kit that farmers can use to actually test themselves, send the data back to you, then get analysis from your end? Yeah, it's a mobile soil testing laboratory used by uh, stakeholders like aggregators or fertilizer companies to be able to support their farmers, provide them with a service, get the information they need to then provide them and, and, and supply them with the fertilizers that are actually needed by those farmers. All right, one last question for you. Um, we've seen some interesting tax changes on, on the pesticide front as well. The tax laws amendment bill here in Kenya, for example, um, removed the tax exemption that pesticides used to enjoy. Are you seeing, based on the data that you come through, are you seeing any hit in how farmers are using pesticides based on that? Well, not yet, but I mean, obviously, you know, that's a direct, uh, you know, increase in cost um, that the farmers have to uh, bear. But uh, what I could say is that it's going to make farmers really think uh, more about precision agronomy because, you know, uh, adopting precision agronomy, we've got the fall armyworm issue where, you know, this is really... Uh, increase the use of insecticides, for example. But where you have precision agronomy and proper crop scouting and crop husbandry, you can actually reduce the, the requirement on, of pesticides quite substantially. And also going back to the soils, if you uh, fertilize your crops properly, and like you and me, if we're well nourished, we don't get sick, it's the same for plants. And if we can build a, a healthy, strong plant through proper nutrition, we're actually gonna le need less pesticides in, in the crop, cropping system. All right, we'll leave it there for the time being. Jeremy, accordingly, thank you for your time. Thank you, it's been a pleasure. Appreciate it.